we're beginning chapter three. We're really knocking these chapters off quickly, aren't we? And we're going to look at cost behavior. And we need to understand cost behavior uh, to understand the later chapters, especially when we get to manufacturing overhead in a job costing situation. Wow, that's a mouthful, isn't it? So let's begin with our variable costs. And we briefly introduced these back in chapter two, but let's redraw them. You know that a variable cost looks like this. It's kind of a, a relationship between the volume or activity and the total cost. Every extra unit we add or every extra hour we work incurs an extra cost. It's variable with the level of activity, but it is constant per unit. So labor may cost me $12 per hour, but every hour costs me 12 bucks, but 10 hours is cheaper than 20 hours, which is cheaper than 30 hours, right? So your total variable costs vary with the number of hours that I gotta pay for, but my cost per hour is constant. That's all that's saying. This down at the bottom, the volume or activity, we call that the activity base. This is the driver. That, that causes our variable cost. So if we're talking about gasoline, our activity base is kilometers driven. If we're talking about uh, uh, wages payable, our activity base is hours worked. If we're talking about uh, um, the total cost of, of materials used in production, our activity base is the number of units. So some popular ones are units made, uh, direct labor hours, uh, machine hours, sometimes you have a very capital intensive process where we use more equipment than labor, so we'd measure our variable cost based on machine hours. Don't forget, direct labor hours and machine hours, we're going to see this again. We're going to see this again when we figure out how we, we divide our manufacturing overhead between different jobs that we work on. I'm jumping ahead, but I'm just telling you, watch it. Now this chart that I drew up here, uh, let me draw the line. It's called a true variable cost. It varies in direct proportion to the activity base. So every extra unit incurs an extra cost. The next unit incurs another cost. The next unit, another cost, etc., etc. That's the very definition of a variable cost. But it doesn't have to be that way. I want you to think of a software license. Now, a software license may be good for the first 10 users and there's one fee and then you'd have to pay another fee for the next 10 users and so on and so on so from user 1 to user 10 the cost looks fixed but from user 1 to user 1000 the cost looks variable but it's variable in steps 1 to 10 there's a cost 11 to 20 there's a cost 31 to uh, 21 to 30 there's a cost etc so it's variable but it's called a step variable cost. It varies only with certain increases to the activity base, but it still varies with the activity base. That's important to know. If it didn't vary with the activity base, it would be fixed. So if we bought a software license that was unlimited, that's a fixed cost. Because no matter how many people we add to the software license, our cost doesn't change. But if it changes for every chunk of people we add, it's called a step variable cost. It looks like this. So every time we hit 10 people, we have to pay the extra fee, and then we're good for the next 10. So it looks like that. Now, all of this talking I've been doing about variable costs, it matters that we uh, specify exactly what we mean uh, by it being constant per unit. Remember I said it's constant per unit. No cost is ever constant per unit. They tend to look like this. It's called curve linear, that they tend to increase over some portion and then they tend to decrease over another portion but look at this if we draw this line in here this is a straight line it approximates a straight line but look what happens when we continue that straight line outside the relevant range we we're way off on our costs but inside this relevant range we're very very close to what it can be so when we talk about variable costs we're forecasting we got to make sure that we're staying within the relevant range costs within the relevant range makes sense Fixed costs, and yes, fixed costs have a relevant range as well, so we're going we're gonna to get to that. But fixed costs we've also seen before. This is a cost that does not vary with the volume, with the level of volume or the level of activity. So it's a straight line. Let's say rent. We pay a certain amount of rent uh, uh, per year, and it doesn't matter how much we use our apartment or how little we use it, it's still the same rent. 
but that's that's if we, if we think about it differently what about our fixed cost per unit well if we have a fixed cost of a thousand bucks and we make one unit it's a thousand dollars per unit but if we make a thousand units and we have a fixed cost of a thousand then it's a dollar per unit so our fixed cost per unit drop as volume increases fixed costs can be committed a committed fixed cost is probably uh, uh, the most common one you can think of it's one that you really can't get out of very easily it cannot be reduced in the short term it can be reduced in the long term but can't be reduced in the short term you've made a commitment so if you have a business that has an office building somewhere that office building and the cost of running that building that's a fixed cost you're not getting out of that easy, especially if you have a 20-year lease. You're, you're there. Either you find someone to take over that lease or you pay a penalty to break it, but you're not getting out of it tomorrow. You're locked in for several years. I gave you an example there in the bracket, a car loan. Think about getting a five-year car loan at a bank. Um, that's a fixed cost for you for the next five years. You're not getting out of that very easily. But they can also be discretionary. Think about your gym membership. You go to the gym, you buy a membership for the next year. It's, it's for a year. For the next year, you're going to pay a certain amount of money. But you don't have to renew it. You just have to pay out the year. That's it. So it's discretionary in the sense that you didn't have to incur that fixed cost, but you did, but it's only for a short period of time. And these discretionary fixed costs typically have just, <clears throat> just annual commitments. So we can think of advertising, research and development, things like that, employee training. <clears throat> we could set a million dollar advertising budget at the beginning of the year, three months in, realize that, ah, this, you know what, this is not working. We can cancel the rest of it. It's discretionary. But once we commit to the million and it's working, it doesn't cost us more if it's working better. It costs us the same million. That's why we say it's fixed because we pay the million it doesn't matter what the volume of activity is after. It doesn't matter what our sales are. It's still the same million, so it's fixed, but it's discretionary. We can cancel it. It can be reduced or eliminated in the short term, and the short term is tomorrow. You can't get out of your gym membership tomorrow. You can't get out of a car loan tomorrow. You can get out of a car loan in a period of a couple of months. You put the car up for sale. You sell it. Uh, whatever you get, you give it to the bank, and you pay the difference or pocket the difference. I don't think you're pocketing the difference, but you can. Discretionary means you can get out. Now, <clears throat> let's get back to that relevant range. Notice that a fixed cost jumps over a period of time. As, as capacity increases, as you hit capacity, you have to continue to add capacity. That's why a fixed ca cost is sometimes called a capacity cost. Well, these come in big chunks. So when we talk about fixed cost being constant, we usually mean over some relevant range. Within some relevant range, they're constant. We're going to see more of this in the problem, so I'm not going to... Uh, put too many words to this we'll just leave it there but somebody out there might have noticed you know what this looks like a step variable cost is a fixed cost not really just a really long-term step variable cost mm, yeah, well, yes and no no because here's why a step variable cost can be adjusted in the short term think of the software license I don't have to add extra workers in fact I can just switch software altogether and I don't have to pay that license anymore so it can be adjusted in the short term, but a variable cost cannot. We're just at some level of capacity. In the very long term, our, our fixed, if we're a growing company, our fixed cost looks like a, a long-term step variable. It just looks like it, but it doesn't act that way. This is a step variable cost. Look how tight these steps are versus the fixed cost, which has really long steps. Now let's extend that relevant range down. The fixed cost in that relevant range is a straight line. This is an inclined line. There we go. You see? The step variable cost has much smaller steps than the, uh, than the, than the fixed cost over relevant ranges. And finally, the mixed cost. The mixed cost you've seen before. You may not know that you've seen it before, but you have. Many of you have seen it before. It's also called a semi-variable cost. What does it mean? Well, it means you have two costs in one. Your total cost, whatever when you look at the total cost, it has a variable cost component plus a fixed cost component all in one bill. A good example is if you've ever moved, you've rented a truck from U-Haul. What did you pay? 
let's say you paid 50 bucks for the truck for the day, plus so much per kilometer. Let's say you paid 20 cents a kilometer. There's a mixed cost. So your total cost for the truck, your total cost equals 50 bucks plus 20.2 times X. We'll call the kilometers driven X. So X is the number of kilometers. So that is your total cost function along with gas, of course, but we'll leave that out now. Let's say it's just 20 cents a kilometer. So this 50, that's your fixed cost. This 20, that's your variable cost. And this X over here is your activity base, all in one formula. So let's rewrite it a little bit more generically now. Let's say, let's call TC, we'll call that Y. So Y equals FC, we'll call A and variable cost we'll call b and we'll leave x the same so y equals a plus b x that is the formula for a straight line with an intercept and there's the intercept 50 so there's your fixed cost portion 50 bucks here's your variable cost portion which is 0.20 x so this area in here is your variable cost this area down here is your fixed cost. Variable plus fixed is total cost. This line is solved by the equation y equals a plus bx. And the slope of the line is b. Is your variable cost per unit? Is the slope of the line? We're going to do a lot with this chart uh, in, in, this, uh, in this chapter. So get used to the way it looks.